Now, and if I preach this one I'm preaching now, this will be the eighth point that we have talked about this month. Point number what? Eight that we'll be talking about now. And I want you to make sure you put what you have heard, what you have learned to work. Make sure you put it to work. When we started on the, the first topic, 2nd of October, I showed us Mark 11, 24. Remember that the Bible says, whatever you desire, you pray, and believe you have received, then you shall receive. I said, after every time you fast and pray, believe God have done it. Begin to walk in that consciousness that God has done it. Don't stay in the realm of God will do. He has done. That's when you can enjoy manifestation. In the second service that day, we saw the life of um, that man who had palsy uh, from Mark 2, 1 to 12. And I said, listen, if you, are, if you fast and pray, after you must have fasted and prayed, learn how to maintain relationships. Stop throwing people away. You must know how to relate. Four men. Four men. Please, those of you here, come and put this in. Here. Do not disturb. They are trying to give me a report. I prayed for them. They went for op operation. You know, people don't know that the work of a pastor is, is a big work. So they just operated the person. The wife was trying to give me a report. She didn't know I would be in, this, in the church. Hallelujah. So we talked about you must know how to maintain relationship. Don't joke with the relationship. The man had palsy. Four people had to carry him. They left their job to carry him, to attend to him. And I said, from the man's life, when they remove the roof, that prayer and fasting does not mean that you should not involve in strategic planning. You must be a strategic planner if you are going to excel. A who? A strategic. Think in strategies. Then we also talked about the third one. If you have a plan, you don't execute it. It's like you have a seed. You didn't plant it, and you're expecting harvest. Then we now moved, we moved to... Uh, Second Sunday of the year of the month, that um, second Sunday of the month, and uh, that was 9th of October. Don't forget all these teachings. Now, I said, if you fast and pray and don't work on your character, your character can waste whatsoever God wants to give you. Now, we saw how Moses fasted and prayed for 40 days to receive the Ten Commandments, and what happened because he was angry, he broke it. That you must work on your habits so that your habits will not destroy whatsoever God is giving you uh, when you pray and fast. Then in the second service, on the 9th of October, I also told us that after you must have prayed and fast, you must also be very sensitive because good thing will not announce himself as good thing when it's coming. You must be very, very sensitive to know what God is doing part time. I told us 9th of October. Then we now move to the third Sunday. That was last week. Last week. Third Sunday was uh, 15th of October. Okay, was it 16th? 16th? I wrote 15th here. Yeah. 16th of October 2022 we talked about praise. That praise never loses a battle. Any battle you, are pray, you approach with a praiseful attitude, you will definitely win. In the first service, I told us seven things that praisers enjoy. Then in the second service, we saw strategies of the devil to kill uh, your praise life. We also talked about that, that you must maintain praisefulness. Don't forget all these things. Then today, 19th of October, is today not 19th? Ah, sorry, that's Thursday, sorry. 23rd of October, uh, we saw Luke 15, 7, that the Bible said there is joy in heaven over his soul, that he bent, that if you make yourself the reason why there will be joy in heaven, which is, if you make yourself a soul winner, God will be so much happy that he will continue to grant you your request. You'll be so much happy that he will continue to what? Grant you your request. Now, today, in, I mean, in this service, the eighth one, that is the last principle you must continue to apply after prayer and fasting, is in the book 
of Numbers chapter 12, verse 1 to verse 11. Numbers 12, 1 to verse 11. They will put it on screen. We all will see together. We will, let's go there. Numbers chapter 12, from verse 1 to verse 11. We'll stand up in honor of God's word to read together. I'll take verse 1. You will take verse 2. I'll take verse 3 until we'll get to verse 11. So if you're in Numbers chapter 12, can you be on your feet, please? It's on screen. Let's be on our feet. Let's honor God's word as we read together. Numbers 12 from verse 1. I'll take verse 1. You take verse 2. Now I read from verse 1. Then Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married. For he had married an Ethiopian woman woman. Now you will read verse 2. Let's go. And the Lord heard. Now the man Moses was very humble. More than all men who were on the face of the earth. Now you read verse 4. Now I read verse 5. Where is verse 5? Then the Lord came down in the pillar of cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Miriam and they both went forward. Now you read verse 6. Can we have verse 6? Then he said, Hear now my words. I read verse 7. Where's verse 7? Not so with my servant Moses. He is faithful in all my house. Now you read verse 8. Hmm. Let me read verse 9. Verse 9. So the anger of the Lord was aroused against them. And he departed. Now you take verse 10. Where is 10? 10. Let's go. And when the cloud departed from above the tabernacle, suddenly. We all are going to take 11 together. 1, 2, 3. Let's go. So Aaron said to Moses, Oh, my Lord, please do not lay this sin on us in which we have done foolishly and in which we have sinned. Father, we ask for revelation this morning. Mr. Kafton, speak to our hearts in Jesus' name of prayer. Please take your seat gladly in God's presence. You're welcome. Hallelujah. Now, there are three things I want us to see from this scripture. I want you to give your attention to it. Number one, uh, what Aaron and Moses did is the first thing I want us to look at. What did they do? Both of them, both Aaron and Moses spoke, uh, Aaron and Miriam spoke against Moses. Now, Moses married an Ethiopian woman and they both sat down and began to speak. Now, don't forget, Moses was their younger brother. They were born by the same father, the same mother. Moses was the last born. So I believe they brought family into uh, church. Saying is our brother, you know, and they started speaking. Why should you marry an Ethiopian woman? We saw that in that scripture we read. Number two, we see what made God to love Moses more than them and to fight for Moses. We see that in verse seven. The Bible says, Show me. The Bible says, For Moses is faithful to me in all my house. Moses is faithful. Not so with my servant Moses. He is faithful in all my house. Faithful in Oje Olotito Ni Me. Faithful in all my house. We are going to come back to those things. And the third thing we saw there, we see the judgment of God placed upon Miriam. What was that judgment? 
Miriam instantly became leprous. Now, listen, the meaning of leprous, you know that is wound all over, uh, sore all over, that didn't heal up. The person stinks. So you can say a leprous person, leprosy is like a typology of shame, disgrace. That's why if you see leopards, they are always far from people. So it equals to shame. Leprous and shame are the same thing. Hallelujah. Now, I want to put this summary. It shows us our lesson. Whoever fights a faithful worker in God's vineyard will experience great shame. Now, let me come again. Whoever fights a faithful worker in God's house will experience shame. That's why you see that God said to them, Ah, not so with my servant Moses. He is faithful to me in all my house. Faithful in all my house. Faithful in all my house. So it should show us today that our focus today, hear me. One of the things you should do after you have fasted and prayed is that you should be more committed to the work of God. Now, when you commit yourself to the work of God, to the things of God, you know what God will do? God will fight your case for you. If whatsoever is fighting you is sickness, God will fight it. If whatsoever is fighting you is humans, God will fight them. God fights the, fi uh, the fight of whoever is faithful to God in his house. And it will be Hallelujah. Say I hear. So this morning, so afternoon, we are going to talk about this. Who is a faithful worker in God's house? Come down in pit. Who is a faithful worker in God's house? Tanya ni no. Tale pe ni eni to she ulo ti to si olorun ni no lere. I want us to look at this today. Let us learn from it. Because if you are faithful in God's house, so many people are not faithful in God's house. They work, but they are not faithful. Now, I know who, what it means to be faithful. A faithful person is who he is in public, is who he is in private. He's not a double-colored person. A faithful person doesn't need supervision to do what is expected of him. He won't forget his assignment. A faithful person is committed from beginning to the end. So we are going to learn from the lives of some people in scriptures so that we will not miss it. So that God can fight for us in our various assignments. And if you are here in church, you are here to find an assignment, please I will encourage you. Very important. After praying and fasting, your, your assignments in church will speak for you. As we said now, let's look at number one. Who is a faithful worker in God's house? Number one, he is like Samuel. One who will not allow himself to be wrongly influenced by the voice of the multitude around him. Who is a faithful worker in God's house? He's like Samuel. One who will not allow himself to be wrongly influenced by the voice of the multitude around him. Today we see so many people. Ah, sister, brother, why are you not in choir? Oh, why are you not in the evangelism? at uh, uh, the uh, uh, team today. Why didn't you come for intercessory prayer meeting? Why didn't you come for your technical whatsoever department? Why is your social -so department not functioning? They will tell you 1,001 reasons. Sir, if you know what people are saying. Ah, sir, if you see what they said. Ah, sir, 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 and sir, 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 things like that. But Samuel, I will show you the temptation of Samuel. Samuel grew up eh, among corrupt priests. Let's go to it. Let's go to it. For Samuel. Go to 1 Samuel chapter 2 from verse 15 to verse 18. Samuel grew up among corrupt priests. I want a lufa to get the ah, or can one dirty, he share one dirty, and he won the Samuel it did day. She went while Samuel you my dirty. Now look at this. So they arose and went over by number. No, no, 1 Samuel chapter 1. I didn't say chapter 2. 1 Samuel chapter 1 from verse 15 to verse 18. 
1 Samuel chapter 1 from verse 15 up to, to verse 18. Is it 1 Samuel? No, 1 Samuel chapter 2. 1 Samuel 2, 15 to 18. Thank you. Sorry. Also, before they burn the fact, look at this. The priest's servants will come and say to the men who sacrifice, give meat for roasting to, to the priest. For he, was, he will not take boiled meat from you, but raw. God had an order of service. Okay, anything they bring for, to the church for Thanksgiving in those days, God will say, this portion, give to the servant in the priest. But while everybody is busy giving offering time, blessing time, the sons of Eli will now tell them, stay there. Oh yeah, mercy. So while they are doing that, the Bible says the people will say, tell them, sir, this is not the order that God puts down. I want to see somewhere. Now, let's read on. And if the men said to him, they should uh, really burn the fat first, uh -huh, then you may take as much as you, your adversaries, he will then answer him, No, but you must give it now. And if not, I will take it by force. Those were the kind of priests he meant. Verse 18. Therefore, the sin of the young men was very great before the Lord. For men had heard the offerings of the Lord. Their sin was very great. But look at verse 18. But Samuel ministered before the Lord, even as a child, wearing a lining and ever could lash on Yet he was ministering faithfully when others were being corrupt. Who is a faithful worker in God's house? He is one that will not allow himself to be influenced. Do you think everybody around you will encourage you to serve God? It's a lie. Oh, do you think I don't face all those things too? Beloved, I, if I tell you some of the temptations we'll face, you will see many uh, 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 people you are fasting and praying and fasting and praying for. They won't see that in church. They won't even say, okay, pastor, we have this gift for you. But they will go to the fakes. Fakes that we pretend that they are fasting. Fakes that we pretend that they are praying. By the time they come back, they say, ah, daddy, daddy, Moshe, she, till London, daily, Munitin, my daughter will leave me. If I don't get to you, my prophet, ah, I've not gotten anywhere. Now, and they will give them gifts. And the faithful will be looking at, ah, ah, but we are the one praying. Are you getting what I'm saying? If you allow anybody to influence you, it's a clear sign that you were never faithful. Faithful people know where they are going. This was a mix of where Samuel grew. And the Bible made us understand that even when he was about to go, when he was about to round up his ministry, what did he say? He gathered the entire Israel and asked them, whose oxen did I take and I did not pay for it? Who did I rob of anything? Let the person come out. He was boasting and saying it, the entire nation, not one person had anything to hold against Samuel. Why? Because he made up his mind. Who is a faithful worker? That there is nothing we preach that unfaithful people will not come and twist. So then we come to you. That preaching of pastor is talking to you. You know what they are trying to do? They are trying to influence you so that your strong hands in God's work can become weak. Look at somebody eyeball to eyeball. Say, I've made up my mind. I didn't hear you now. Say, I've made up my mind. I will serve God faithfully the way Samuel did. Because see, hear me, corrupt people will always be around. I've told you here before. How one of our daughters came to tell me, it gave me a testimony. And was said, praise the Lord. Ah, ah, sir, praise the Lord. I, somebody said he wants to marry me. And if, I told one of my pastor friends. The pastor said, hey, do you want to allow her to go? The person that wants to marry her, is he a member of the church? I said, no. Don't allow her to go. Convince her. Pastor, arrange. Let a brother in the church marry her. I said, God forbid. There is corruption everywhere. But you have to make up your mind that you will not be influenced. Can I tell you the truth? Samuel's testimony is, an, is a perfect example that you can stand faithfully among a corrupt generation. The first time I was to travel out of the, the country and I got to the uh, port of entry and I, I presented my, my passport, that was when I knew that green passport does not have value anywhere in the world. That's Nigerian passport. If you put Nigerian passport down, 
in any port of entry, they will search you like a criminal. Why? Because Nigerians have painted that green passport with the color of corruption. But you make up your mind. That if they say every Nigeria is different, is corrupt, be the one that somebody will relate with and decide to say, I have eventually found one Nigerian that is not corrupt. Will you be that one? That was the same thing I told myself about four or five, four years ago. Whenever I'm driving in those days, because the way people drive, some people will drive one way just because everybody wanted to get to where they are going fast. So one day too, I was driving one way and somebody, a bike man, just parked. He said, you are driving like a madman. And I'm the general overseer, God's power evangelical mission, a servant of God. That word kept ringing in my heart. You are driving like a madman. You are driving like a madman. And I asked myself the question, am I not a madman? Because traffic says go this direction. Yeah, I was going this direction because I was going somewhere. I now made up my mind from that year that no matter what, I will not drive against traffic again. Who is a faithful worker? A faithful worker is like Samuel, one who will not allow himself to be wrongly influenced by the voice of the multitude around him. I wrote here, if you allow your environment to wrongly influence you, then you never had an encounter. If you allow your environment to wrongly influence, influence you, then you never had an encounter. Because see, if you say you have had an encounter with Jesus, test will show. Hello? Test will show. But it's you that have made up your mind. The encounter you have is what will sustain you. Let's look at number two. Who is a faithful worker? In God's house. Number two. He is like Zachariah, one who will not allow his personal problem to hinder his faithful commitment to the assignment God put in his hands. Let me come again. Who is a faithful worker? Number two, he is like Samuel. Like Zachariah, sorry. He is like Zachariah. One who will not allow his personal problem to hinder his faithful commitment to the assignment God has placed in his care. Luke chapter 1 from verse 5 to verse 17. Now, I'm going to show you as we are going to read. As at the time that Zechariah was priest of Israel, hear me church, Zechariah did not have a child. Kulomo. He was suffering of this... Oh, oh, of delay, he didn't have a child yet. He was priest. Hello, me until retired and alone until damn alone, alone until damn alone. I want to kill chef. Me only chef on like like. Look at this. Now there was in the days of Herod, the king of Judah, a certain priest named Zachariah, of the division of Abijah. His wife was of the daughter of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. What now happened? And they both were righteous before God, walking in all the commandments. An ordinance of the Lord, blamelessly faithful people, but they had no child. Can you see? But one loma, because Elizabeth was barren. The Bible did not say God closed the womb, and they were both well advanced in years. One loma, Arabi riyango, one city dagba, belue no one fisher ulu asile. They didn't have a child because the woman was barren, and the Bible said they were advanced in age yet. They were still functioning in the house of God as a priest. Ah, some other people have threatened God. If you don't give me a child, Lord, I will not serve you again. If you don't give me a child, Lord, I will drop this assignment. A faithful person does not allow his personal challenge to affect his service. Now, even let's bring it, we are still going to finish that scripture. Let's bring it to work ethics. They will tell us that is one of the ethics of work. That no matter what your problem is, drop it at the entrance of the of your gate. Abi, it be shut on batik by. No matter what your your problem is, one boss say no on our gate. My jeki challenges say ko affect in shut on today some salary for him. That is, don't allow your your challenges to in that to affect the work while you are being paid. If we can do that in the secular, 
and you see that somebody will have challenge, by the time you get to the gate, you quickly clean the eyes. He clean the eyes. My boss must not see me crying. I must do my work. He will get to the office and do his work. Why will you now be toiling with God? God, God, you know I've not eaten. And since I've not eaten, hey, Lord, today I'm not going to sing in the choir. See, get growing your understanding uh, in your work with God to the point that you won't allow any problem to be a limitation. What now happened to Zachariah? Let's read on. Let's read on. So it was that while it he was serving, hey, while he was serving as priest before the Lord in the order of his division, that is when it was time for him to say, yes, carry sacrifice to the Lord. He didn't wave it to somebody else. He didn't say, God, you know I don't have a child. Let somebody else do it. And you can grow so that God can bless us more. Now, let's put it up. According to the custom of the priesthood, his lot fell to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. Verse 10. And the whole multitude of the people was praying outside at the hour of incense. He was still carrying out his work. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. I have seen an angel. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer is hard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall call his name John. You know, I've told you here before, your miracle is waiting for you at the place of your assignment. But have you not left that assignment? That's why, see, condemn me, my child. Let them tie me, I will be loose. Any time it is time to do my assignment, I do it with all player. I was telling my wife, I'll be preaching in a church tomorrow, next tomorrow, uh, an opportunity. Three days I'll be in a church preaching. I remember one convention I went to preach. I'd received the invitation and I was very strong that day. I was shivering in the morning, shivering in the afternoon. And I'll be preaching in that co convention by 6 p.m. The man of God had prepared that Pastor Prince Will is coming. Few minutes to six. Lord, I said, Lord, this is your work. I don't want to give excuse. I can give excuse, but I don't want to give excuse. I know why I said I will not give excuse. I remember the testimony of the late uh, Riyad Bonki. He said he, he, when God gave him that crusade ministry, he was not preaching. He doesn't used to preach. That there's this man of God I used to invite. The man of God will come. The man of God will preach. Miracles will happen. Blind will see. Deaf will speak. You know, cripple will walk dead will raise. He said, but this particular day, they had few hours to the meeting. The man of God just called, Bunky, Bunky, I'm sorry, I will not be able to preach today. Ah, sir, few hours, we have done all the publicity. Everybody is gathering because of this meeting. Now, this is just about two, three hours before the meeting starts. He said, no, they just called me that my wife is a bit strong and I have to fly back to Germany. Ah, sir, don't fly back. God will heal your wife over there. He said, no, I have to fly back to Germany right now. Bonky said, as the man left, he sat down. He was disturbed. What do we do? How can we handle this meeting? Lord, have your way. He said, all of his only he had, I release the man to, to you. Go up now. He said, that day, he went up to preach 50 See one blind people open their eyes. That day, the first day, he said that was what led him to the second day. Ha! Ah, you know that now he now had courage. The second day, cripples started working, miracles started happening. Sir, that was the end of that man's ministry and the beginning of Bonkey's ministry. Ah, may your place not be given to somebody else. You must never give your problem the privilege. I wrote here, make up your mind that no matter what your challenges are, you will still be faithful to God. Make up your mind that no matter what your challenges are, you will still be faithful to God. Did you hear me? 
We used to sing that song. Nigba to ba te wa lorun. You are the most high. Be o si te wa lorun. You are the most high. Nigba to ba te wa lorun. Whether we like it or not, he's still the most high. Serve him. And don't allow any personal problem to deprive you. Let's take number three. Who is a faithful worker? Number three. He is not like Gehazi. One who is not waiting, sorry, one who is always waiting for a reward from man. He's not like Gehazi. One who is always waiting for reward from man. You know, there are some workers like that. When you ask them, hey, sister, are you going to lead that prayer? What would they give me? Kill them for me. Kill them for me. Kill them for me. Don't be like, don't be like Gehazi. That was what destroyed the ministry of Gehazi. Gehazi will have become the carrier of maybe a, a times four portion. You know, Elisha carried the f- double portion. He will have carried the fourth, four portions. Because by the time Elisha was going, he have said, okay, sir, give me double portion of your anointing. So he will have carried times four of what Elijah carried. Times two of what Elisha carried. But look at, he was looking for reward. Some of you are workers in the church. You only want to work in the department where the pastor will see you. So the pastor will stand and say, Ah, I'm going to try it. I'm try it. Ah, I want to work at you. I want to try it. I want to try it. Timba yinye, eh, eri tu magba, nwa jwa lwa unye, tiba niye. Because pastor will ni agba da la ti fi san e san, i shetou nishi fo lwa lwa. Taluma san, e da anwe soro soke. It's God. No pastor asks what it takes to reward you. Okay, if we say we should give you money, let's, how much do we want to give you? But if God decides to reward, if God says, okay, my son, my daughter, it's time now. I want to reward you for the toilets you have been washing. I want to reward you for the, uh, 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 play, uh, the church you have been sweeping. I want to reward you for making sure that the sound is great. God is the rewarder. Don't be like Gehazi. You know what touched Gehazi? By the time Naaman was coming back, he was coming back with thanksgiving. Sir, sir, I didn't know. That the, that simple instruction will heal me. The Bible says he now brought gifts. Isoga, Elisha said, Sorry, God said we should not collect anything. And Gehazi had come back and come Kiwali Kiwali and Shelati Joy. Let's look at it. Shagadabaskele. Ninga Toba Tewa Loro. You are Second Kings chapter 5. 20 to 27. Most I God, Jehovah, you are the most I Jehovah. We are waiting. Jehovah Shama, you are. Second Kings chapter 5 from verse 20. Now look at it. But Gehazi, the servant of Elisha, the man of God said, Look, ah, my master has speared the man. This Syrian, just like that, while not receiving from his hands what he brought, ah, but as the Lord lives, so I will run after him and take something from him. Can you see? There are people like that too. They are working in church, but all they are working for is for people to see and praise them. If you are that kind of worker, begin to change your mindset. What should you work for? Work so that God will reward you. Ah, beloved, when God decides to reward you, sir. I had the testimony. It was Dr. Paul in Ninchi that shared it. That there's this worker in their church. You know, when they were building the church, this man, very committed worker in the sanctuary department, always very committed. So when they were building the church, he said he made, the man thought in his mind, that, ah, my pastor said they need chairs. And all the chairs needed in church, almost hundred and something thousand chairs, royal banquet chairs. He now made up, ah, how I wish God can bless me. Do you know that God, that was how God linked him up 
with the manufacturer of those chairs in Philippines. They met in the plane. And that person said, you want to do what? He said, I, want to, I don't know how much can I get these chairs for my church. The person said, because you have that kind of mind, what church do you have? He mentioned his church. He said, you become my distributor in Africa. God will reward you. I didn't hear your email. Yeah. I said, God will reward you. Yeah. But stop working for mere earthly reward. Let's move fast. We have just 15 minutes more. Number four. Who is a faithful worker? He is not like Demas. 2 Timothy 4 10. He is not like Demas. Who allows his pursuit for the things of this world to take his commitment from God's assignment away. Pursuit of the things of the world. Could that be Demas to Jepe to Ba a Ilepa Omaye to to Jacob Ba a Itarae Nusia Lord? Look at it. He said, For Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world, and has departed from Thessalonian Christians, from from Galatians, Titus for Demas later, whatever. But we are, we are looking at for Demas has forsaken me. Why did he forsake Paul? He forsakes Paul because of the pursuit of the things of the world. Faithful workers are committed workers. Quickly, let's take this one before we close. How can you work for God? How can you work for God? There are five answers to this one. Pay attention to this, number one, to this. Number one, his instruction. Because at times, some of you, God will tell you directly what he wants you to be doing for him. I've had testimonies like that. People said, sir, God said I should be cleaning the toilet. We have them in our church. We didn't have that department. That department was under sanctuary keepers. But the person said, God said I should be cleaning the toilet. Oh dear man, nobody knows. Now, don't forget, your miracle is in the place of where your assignment. Your reward is in the place of where your assignment. Where is your reward? The place of your assignment. I have a, a pastor friend. He said, God called him to, for, into ministry. He said, he was not asking God, what did you call me for? God said, be going to UCH. Use your connection to help people to meet the consultants and the professors they will need for their health. He said, Lord, okay, who are the people I should be using the connection for? He said, agent people. To Batiri Arubo, to YUCH, to the ferry doctor, to your mobile imani, your connection and phone. He said, he said, he said, he said, he Do you know that he said, he was sharing a testimony. He said, he didn't know that he helped somebody and the son of the person is a colonel. He helped the person to see the uh, the consultant, they got drugs for the mama. Was all, every time mama come for appointment, he would help her to see the, uh, the prof. Then the son now told the colonel, uh, the son, and the mama told the colonel, her son. He said, when it, uh, her mom, his mom died, they want to do the burial. Do you know that it was that colonel that God used to carry about 90% of burial expenses? Your reward is in the place of your assignment. But we are looking at how to work for God. Pay attention to this. What's number one? His instructions. Number two, your area of giftings. At times you won't hear anything. But pay attention to the area of your gift. See? Now, God can use your gift in his house. So once you know that, ah, and I'm gifted in this area, and I'm gifted in this area, look for that department in that church. Now, if they don't have that department in that church, you can even talk to the pastor. Sir, I'm gifted in this area. Can we bring out a department? I met one man like that. He was, he's in New Covenant Church. Uh, the man is rich and wealthy. He's wealthy. God has really blessed him. He said when he joined the church, they didn't have eminent personality evangelism department. He now went to the pastor and told pastor that, sir, I just have this leading that I should be bringing my class to church. Pastor said, how do you intend do it, doing it? He said, I want also to be doing a kind of breakfast program. I will run the expenses. Pastor, just come and preach. 
So they will cook. It's not the kind of uh, rice that some of us eat. They cook Chinese rice, all this kind of uh, uh, expensive food. He will invite his friends. Pastor will come and preach. That was how the church started having eminent people in their, in their church. And God was blessing him. So at times, you could be pay attention to your word, to your area of giftings. Can I go on? Three, under it, pay attention to what irritates you most in your church. Kila won, kotu ma munu be in church. Uli je kibe assignment iti ewa. Ah, oh, in that church, if somebody doesn't come one year, nobody will ask of him. You may be our visitation evangelist. Oh, in that church, their sound is not good. You may become, you may be the one that God is bringing to balance our sound. Hello? Oh, in that church, service will be on, generator will be off. You may be the one God is bringing in to stabilize power. Oh, in that church, they don't take care of servants of God well. It may be that God is bringing you in for the charity of God's servants. Pay attention. I'm showing you areas you can work for God. Pay attention to what irritates you most. Under it again. How do you know what to do for God? Pay attention to what his servants commit to your care. At times, God works like that. He may just, he may just put it in the heart of his servants to say, okay, please, can you be in charge of the King's Men Fellowship? See it as God's assignment. Are you here? That's number one. All those things under number one. Number two, how can you work for God? Number two, Stop thinking you are working for God's servant. If you are looking at God's servant, you'll be discouraged though. Hello? You are actually working for God, not his servant. Take number three. There's no time. Number three. Do not allow anyone, or sorry, any form of discouragement don't allow any form of discouragement. I remember I was listening to uh, uh, Bishop Abiyoye. He said he went for evangelism with his Bible like this. Look up everybody. And he was coming. He said that as he was coming from evangelism, come and see the cloud became black. Rain was about coming. Ah! He said my Bible. Ah! My Bible. Ah! I'll be soaked today. Ah! What do I do? He said then the rain started drizzling. Dear, 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 dear. The rain started drizzling. He said, all of a sudden, he saw Bishop David Oedeko coming. Driving his Beatles. Because that was his first car. He said he was saying, praise God. Ah, Bishop is coming. That time it was Reverend David. Reverend David is on his way. He said, and he was waving like this. And Bishop Oedeko just drove across. Vroom! and left. Didn't wait to pick him. Bishop Abiyu, he said, he got angry. Ah! Who is the owner of the vision? Is it not him? I went for evangelism so that the church will grow. If the church grow, is it, not, is it not going to be happy? Ah! I'm going to leave this church today. He said that day, the rain fell. The rain beat nonsense on him. His Bible was wet. He said, and his pastor did not wait to pick him. He said, while he was going in anger, I'm going to leave this church. My church is here. I will join another church. He said, he had the voice of God. Said to him, David, my son, who are you working for? He said, sir, but he said, who should you look at? Second question, who should you look at? Talu Yekumao. He said, that was what settled it. Now, today, 
quiz number two in Winners Chapel Worldwide. I didn't hear you. He's the one. So at times, eh, those discouraging the discouragement you are allowing is trying to take the plan of God away from you. Say the devil will not succeed. Let's take number four. How can I work for God? Number four, we saw about number five. Put your best into it as a way of appreciating God. How do I work for God? Put your best into it. See every opportunity to work for God as a way of appreciating God for his goodness in your life. And finally, number five. Never stop seeing yourself as a vessel in his hands. Kosi ba lono she lueto magdag bepe ungwe lulu jelo walono marira yo. As you remind yourself that you are a vessel, the more humble you become. But if you continue to look at yourself, the more proud you become. And what happens to proud people? God puts them aside. Lift up your two hands. Say, oh God, use me. I didn't hear you say, oh God, use me. For your will and for your purpose. Let's be on our feet. Jehovah, you are the most high. Jehovah, Jehovah, needs you are the most high. Jehovah, Shama, you are. Be on your feet, everybody. Ah, Jehovah, you are. Ah, Jehovah. Ah, Igbato bate wa loro you are. Biu si te wa loro. You are the most high. I say Jehovah. Jehovah, you are the Messiah. Jehovah, Nisi. Jehovah, Jireh. Come, Lou. I was listening to the message of late. Uh, Dr. Yongo Chiu, the man that pastored the world largest church in his lifetime. About 1.5 million people sit down every Sunday morning in that 1.5 million. Not in satellite place churches, so in one center. As at that time, he had about 700, 700 Dickens and Dickness, the pastor's house fellowship. He said somebody died in their church. One man. A very devoted worker. As they were about to bury him, on the day of burial, the man woke up. They have set everything. They want to set him on fire. The man woke up. Ah! The man now shares his experience. He said, I met my wife. His wife had died ahead of him. He said, a very big place, beautiful place. His wife was a worker in church, but not, in the, not a preacher. The work the woman was doing is that in her house, she reserved some rooms that any time they had missionaries, the pastor should tell her she will host them and feed them. He said, oh, no, she knew. She had done it for several years before she died. 
You know what now made the man to die? The man was disturbed, was angry, was that uh, his wife died and left the children. It was depression that now killed him. He said as he died, Jesus took his body and said, follow me. He now showed him his wife. The wife now asked him, why are you depressed? Where I am, I'm enjoying. The reason why you are brought here is for you to go back so that you stop being depressed over me. I'm happy where I am. He said, he now asked, why are you this blessed? I know what you did for the Lord when you were not. You are not the pastor. He said, God said, this is the reward of my own work. Go back and do your own. God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I don't know why you will be in church and you will not be doing anything for the Lord. Find something out of the ways I've shown you. Maybe God has given you, a, he has spoken to your ears. Face it. I know of people that God spoke to, be taking care of my servant. Pastor Adibui, she had one. He said, there are seven men in their church. He said, when he cough, if Pastor Adibui should cough, oh, he said, these seven men said, we have tied our business to you, sir. Mention what you need, we will do it. Now, if you didn't hear God's voice, it could be something that is irritating you. What is that thing? If anything that irritates you is a sign of what God wants you to fix. Then if yours is that you have been given an instruction, oh yeah, go and do this. Cameraman, you are not here. If God has given you instruction, see, be doing it with your heart. My mentor shared one experience with us many years ago too. They are praise leader. She used to, anytime they say come and lead praise, she would prepare like she has, she's going for concert. They didn't know that this particular day, somebody was watching online from UK. The person took the account details of the church. Took the, tele, the phone number he saw on their website. Paid some amount and said, and called Bishop. Bishop said, they said, so, so and so often I paid. It's for the person that lead praise. We didn't have her account number. Please give her that money. She lifted her spirit. Don't do the work eh, of God like they force you. God will reward you. I didn't hear you. Amen. This is the last topic under the if, uh, things to do to make your prayer and fasting effective. Do the work of God with joy. If you are in the visitation team, visit people with joy. If you are in the welcoming team, receive people with joy. If you are in the sanctuary, keep us clean with joy. Anything you are doing for the Lord, do it with joy. Don't do eye service. God doesn't bless eye service people. You know the reward of eye service people? The eyes that see you, that's the reward. Have you learned something? Can I pray for you? Can I pray for you now? So, keep bubu waka shekini. Lift up your two hands. Ah. Exalted Father, we are grateful again for what you have done today. I pray for your sons, I pray for your daughters, that today that marks the beginning of this new week, every evil being planned from hell. Lord, we cancel it now. In the name of Jesus. Ah, you will not fall for the enemy to rejoice. Amen. I say you will not fall for the enemy to laugh. Amen. I pray that the, the positive book of God's remembrance be open. Concerning you, this week begin to enjoy reward for faithful service. Amen. I say your going out is blessed. Your coming in is blessed. I put angels in charge of you to watch over you. May they fight whoever fights you this week in the name of Jesus. It is well with you. You are blessed and you are favored. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Can we?